Thanks for joining us at Fox and Moon Tea. Today I want to share a bit of an introspective story about tea and water and energy transference. And I'm remembering on this day of solstice a trip I took to Tea Source in China. And one of the tea masters shared with me a tradition of pouring the tea over a crystal as you're brewing the tea. And as he relayed the story, he said it was really to impart the qualities of the stone and the rock and the mineral in the tea and that energy. And, you know, I have a very logical and also poetic mind at the same time. So knowing that the tea can't be hot enough to actually pull the minerals out of the stone, I thought about it a little bit further and I realized it makes sense from an energy transfer standpoint. There's um, science research that is done um, where people are transferring energy and emotion into sound waves and it affects the water and changes the crystalline formation in the water. And they're doing research on that, which I find pretty fascinating. And I also know tea is very poetic and introspective experience. And the longer I sit with tea, the more I respect nature around me and I feel wonder in that and mystery in that. And as I'm preparing tea for my tea guests, the energy I bring to that service is definitely transferred into the tea. So today I am doing a Dan Kong Yellow Spring Oolong in honor of this memory. And I actually have a similar, um, I don't have the crystal that I got when I was in China. I could not find it in time for this video. But what I do have is a similar tradition in Lithuania where they take amber stones and they imp infuse them with sun. So they'll lay them out in the forest and basically give them a sun bath. And they believe that the sun is stored in these stones and they brew a tea from this, which is basically um, just bring hot water with the stones and they believe it transfers that energy into the water. Today I'm actually going to mix up the two cultures and do the Dan Chong Yellow Sprig Oolong with the amber stones. So I've brewed this tea for about two minutes, which is a little bit longer than I normally do, but this is a smaller vessel and I'm also using less tea leaves than normal. I have about a, a teaspoon of tea leaves in here. So I'm gonna pour this over the amber stones. You can see this beautiful color that it has naturally and then also you can see the color of the stones underneath they're actually very similar in color i wasn't planning that but that's pretty neat coincidence Mm. This is a lovely oolong that has a nice bite on the tongue and is very heady and aromatic and floral. It has kind of a loquat taste to me today. And I can share the leaves with you too. So you can see these leaves, uh, you definitely want to brew most oolongs more than once and they evolve over time with each infusion. And you can see the nature of these leaves. They're very long and side twisted. And so they will open up over time and release flavors with each infusion. So definitely let your tea evolve and spend time with it and enjoy that as it unfolds itself in front of you and tells that story. You can also see the color of the leaves um, and get a sense of the, the production style for this tea and how it affects the flavor. So you can see there's some rusty oxidation on the sides. There's a little bit of the twig, but it's really a nice pluck of the leaf and you can see green and some browns as well. So you get a sense of how much that tea is oxidized. So this is Zoe from Fox and Moon Tea. Thanks for joining me and please visit us at foxandmoontea.com. Happy solstice.